Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and we're checking out the iMation Link today. This is an all-in-one storage and power device for the iPhone. It only works with the iPhone 5 and up. Uh, so this one that we're looking at has 32 gigabytes of onboard storage. It is not replaceable. It also has a 3000 milliamp hour battery so you can charge the device and also stream movies or music or whatever else you store on it. It is not wireless. It uses a lightning cable for both the charging and the data transfer and you can do both at the same time. It also has a USB plug on here as well so you can charge the battery in here. Uh, you plug it into your computer or another uh, AC adapter that supports USB and you can charge it up. Uh, what's cool is that it works like you know, any USB flash drive would when it's plugged into a computer. So if you have some huge files that you want to copy over to your iPhone or just have available to your iPhone, uh, just drag them in like you would any other USB flash drive and they'll be accessible on the iPhone when you plug everything in. It also has a neat little cradle here at the bottom. It's sometimes hard to get it out, but once it pops out, uh, you can then prop your phone up in here. So if you're on a plane or something and just want to have a stand for your phone, uh, they've integrated that as well, which is very nice. And there's a switch here on the back uh, to start the charging. So you can uh, leave it off and just use it for data transfer, or you can switch it on and then get the phone to charge up. So uh, they give you some flexibility as to when you want to use the battery as well. And if you push the button here at the top, uh, you can get an idea of how much battery power is left in the device. So let's pop open the app and see how it works. Now to get started, all you have to do is plug it into the bottom of your phone. Uh, one annoyance though is that it pops up this little message every time you plug it in asking if you want to load the app, which I just find really annoying. Even if you don't want to use the app, you have to tell it you don't want to use the app. And I, I wish there was a way to get rid of that. Uh, one other thing is that when you have it plugged in right now, you see that I have the switch on, so it's charging. If I just flick this switch to the off position, it'll stop charging. So you have a lot of uh, very easy flexibility as to whether or not you want to use the onboard battery. What we'll do first though in the app, you can see it's very simple, which I like. Uh, you can go uh, into the power drive icon here and I've got a movie that I loaded up on my computer and I can just scroll through it very quickly. This is a 1080p movie file uh, so it's streaming over the cable here and I think that's one of the nice things about having a cable as your entry point is that you don't have to pair it up first or find its Wi-Fi or anything else. It just plugs in and you can get access to the storage. It also seeks uh, relatively quickly if you want to skip around to different parts of the movie so that is pretty handy as well. Uh, one thing it doesn't do though is keep a bookmark as to where you last left off. So for longer form things like watching movies or something like that, uh, it'd be nice if there was a bookmarking feature so you could you know, pick up where you last left off. Uh, one other thing of note is that it doesn't work with like the iTunes protected files. So if you downloaded something from the iTunes store, it has to be on your phone uh, through the store and not uh, loaded onto here. So DRM free only uh, is what you're going to need to get uh, going on here. But there are very, you know, pretty easy ways to get uh, DRM free stuff onto any device that you want to hook it up to. It also can browse photos and playback audio. So you can kind of scroll through a photo album. Unfortunately, you can't scroll through an album, you have to load up each photo individually. So that uh, doesn't really have that functionality that you might find on uh, the iPhone's photo uh, roll, but you can uh, click the upload button here and dump it into your uh, photo gallery or put it to another application as well. So that is pretty handy there. Now, if you want to put stuff onto it, what you do is go back out to the main menu. Uh, you can go into your media library here and we can pick out maybe a couple of Instagram videos that I uh, have on my device here and hit done and it will then give you the choice of whether to put it on local storage or the power drive. Local storage is a little confusing because there is local already, uh, but the app has its own file store. So you can kind of uh, put things into the app, store them inside the app, and then uh, kind of put them in a holding tank. So you can move things over from the power drive uh, onto your phone, store them there, then pop them into another application. So you have a way of uh, getting stuff on here off of the device if you have it unplugged or it's not available. But in this case, we're just gonna copy it over to uh, the power drive and we'll pick the photos folder to put those in. You can put them anywhere really. And we'll hit copy to here and it will then uh, copy those over and they go over uh, fairly quickly. A couple of the things of note is you have uh, the ability to back up and restore your contacts. It uh, basically exports your uh, contact list as a vCard uh, file, a big vCard file if you have a lot of contacts and that's where it goes from there. Now it is possible to move documents out of other applications into the app that supports the drive. Not a very simple process and it also doesn't support some of the new features in iOS 8 that would make it a more simplified process. So this is what you have to do. Uh, we're in Dropbox right now. I'm looking at a PDF file that I have on my, on my Dropbox account. So I'm going to go over to uh, Open In because you can see here all the new iOS 8 apps that support uh, just that extensibility feature. You know, we're not seeing the link here. Uh, we're not seeing it in here either. So uh, we have to go in and do it the old fashioned way, which is the Open In. And then we have to scroll through our list of available applications that can support a PDF. And I'll click on that. It'll then uh, toss it over to uh, the Link app. And that's what we're seeing here. So we're now we're seeing the same document being browsed inside the Link app. 
I have to click done and then it will pop up a reminder when I go to local storage as to where it put that file. I click on local storage. So this is the storage that is, uh, is basically assigned to the app itself inside my phone. So it's residing on my phone now uh, inside the link app. I'll click on others. There's the document again. I got to click on edit, tag this, uh, copy, and then go to the power drive and it will then finally uh, move it to uh, the power drive. So a really arduous process in moving documents outside of other applications into here, uh, but it can be done. So that is the iMation Link Power Drive. And there's a lot to like about this device, primarily its simplicity. You just plug it in and you're off and running, uh, even with that annoying prompt that helps you find the app every time you connect it. Uh, the battery works well on here. It does charge the phone quite nicely. I would like to see though better iOS 8 integration, especially for a device that only works on the iPhone. Uh, because it was really difficult to move that file out of Dropbox and over to uh, the power drive uh, externally. And you know, in prior versions of iOS, that was kind of the track you had to take, is move it out of one app into the other one, open it up in there, and then uh, work on it. Now with iOS extensibility features that are part of iOS 8, uh, those two apps could actually talk to each other and really cut down the number of steps to get files moved back and forth. Another thing is it feels like it's like $20 too expensive to me. I really feel like this should cost around $50 and not around $75, uh, which is what they're, or $77 is what they're currently charging for the 32 gigabyte version. It's nice, but I don't know if it's like $77 nice, especially with the app uh, not fully supporting iOS 8 just yet. One other thing to note is that the app also doesn't support the new larger screens of the 6 and 6 Plus, so you're gonna have that kind of zoomed in look uh, that you get on apps that aren't yet formatted for the larger screens as well. So I would expect they'll probably do an app update at some time in the near future. I hope they do, uh, and when they do, we'll do a follow-up video, but I do like it. I wish it cost a little bit less, uh, but it's certainly worth looking at if you want something small that does uh, everything you just saw in this video. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.